Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about the problem of finding longest common subsequence. First, let's define what is longest common subsequence. We have two strings, x and y, and we want to find their longest common subsequence. First, let's find the common subsequence of length one, which is easy. X has a, y has a, so a is a common subsequence of x and y, and so is c, and so is g. And then let's find the common subsequence of length two. X has a c, y has a and c. Note that the common subsequence doesn't have to be consecutive. X has c c. Y has C C, X has C G, Y has C and G, X has A G, Y has A G. Next, let's find the common subsequence of length three. X has A C C, Y doesn't have A C C. X has C C G, Y also has C C G. So the common subsequence of length three is C C G. Next, finding the common subsequence of length four. For X, it must be A C C G, and there is no A C C G in Y, so there is no common subsequence of length four. So by manually analyzing these two strings, we can find that the longest common subsequence of these two strings is. C C G with the length of three. This problem of finding longest common subsequence is a very practical problem. For example, we know a DNA sequence can be expressed as a string of character A C G T. So, by finding the longest common subsequence of two strands of DNA, we can see how similar these two strands of DNA are. Therefore, tell if the two persons are related or not. It can help people to find their long-lost child, for example. But the problem is, we have to look at very long sequences of DNA strings. Now we have much longer x and y, and it is no longer possible to manually find the longest common subsequence of x and y. We have to write a program and implement some algorithm to find the answer. Let's denote the size of x is n and the size of y is m. Since x is shorter than y, so our algorithm is like this: for integer i from n to one, find all subsequence of x with length of i. Find all the subsequence of y with the length of i. If there's a common subsequence between x and y, we've found the answer. Break. So this algorithm is simple and straightforward. We know it will work. The problem is how complex is this algorithm? Let's consider how many subsequence does x have with the length of i. The answer is this. So the worst case complexity of this for loop is a summation of this formula for every i. So this is the complexity of the algorithm, and I trust you that you have learned from your math class. This is exponential in n. So this algorithm is very complex, and we cannot afford it. We have to find a better algorithm. Now let's try to use dynamic programming to solve this problem. The idea of dynamic programming is to solve a complex problem by breaking it down into smaller subproblem. So here, since the problem with size of n and m is too complex for us, let's consider a problem with Smaller size i and j, i is less than n and j is less than m. 
So let's define Cij is the length of longest common subsequence of sequence x1 to xi, which is this one, and y1 to yj, which is this one. Note that our index start with 1. And by definition, Ci0 is equal to 0 for all i, because 0 means the length of the sequence is 0, so its longest common subsequence must be 0. And for the same reason, C0j is also equal to 0 for all j. And our goal is to gradually increase i and j and eventually find C and M. To achieve this goal, the key question is how to use C with smaller i and j to compute C with greater i and j. By analyzing the problem, we come up with this formula. If xi equal to xj, which means the last item is the same, then cij equal to ci minus 1, j minus 1, plus 1. Since the last item is the same, so if we take off the last item, then we get ci minus 1 and j minus 1. Otherwise, if the last item is not the same, then cij equal to the bigger of ci minus 1 j and ci j minus 1. Since we have the initial condition and we have this formula to derive c with bigger i and j, eventually we'll find c and m. Now let's look at our code. In the main function, I create two string x and y. And then I call the function calc lcs. This is the function that will implement our algorithm. So let's finish up this function. The first step is to create c and initialize it. So I have created a matrix C, which is to store the length of longest common subsequence of sequence x1 to xi and y1 to yj. Note that our index starts from 1, so the first item of each string is ignored. And then I initialize C to be a n by m matrix, and each entry of the matrix is initialized to 0. So we also have finished the initialization of C value for C i0 and C 0 j. The next step is to implement this formula. So we have two nested loops. The outer loop is for i and the inner loop is for j. If xi equal to yj, then cij is equal to ci minus 1, j minus 1, plus 1. Otherwise, cij will take the bigger of cij minus 1 and ci minus 1, j. So this is exactly the replica of this formula. So by the end of these two loops, C will contain the longest common subsequence length of x and y. So let's print out the C and inspect its value. This is a utility to print matrix that I created. And now we can actually run the program. So this is the C, and the C and M is this guy, which indicates the length of the longest common subsequence is 5. So we have found the length of the longest common subsequence, but we don't know what the sequence is yet. In order to find the sequence, we need more information. 
To be specific, we need a data structure to save the position of the elements of the longest common subsequence. So let's create another matrix. Call it S, and S is to store the position of longest common subsequence. And let's use a matrix of char to save the position. And we need to initialize the size of S to be n by m. And if xi equal to yj, we'll set sij equal to s. s means they are the same. And when they are the same, it means either xi or yj, it doesn't matter which one because they are the same, either xi or yj is one item of the longest common subsequence. If they are not the same, and if ci j minus 1 is bigger than ci minus 1 j, then we set sij equal to j. What this means is, even if we take away the last item of y, we can still find the same longest common subsequence. So we can safely take away the last item of y. Otherwise, we'll set sij equal to i, which means we can safely take away the last item of x and still can find the same longest common subsequence. So s has saved all the information we need to find the longest common subsequence. So finally, we can write a function to print out the longest common subsequence. Let's call our function print lcs, and it will take s as one parameter, x as another parameter, and x dot size minus 1, that is our n, y dot size minus 1, that is our m. And our function would be, look like this. If i equal to 0 or j equal to 0, it means we have reached the end. There will not be any common subsequence left. If si j equal to s, it means xi and yj are the same. So xi must be one element of the longest common subsequence. So we just print it out. If sij equal to j, it means we can safely take away the last element of y and can still find the same longest com common subsequence. Else, sij must be equal to i, which means we can safely take away the last element of x and can still find the longest common subsequence. So let's run the program. It prints out AGGAC. That's the longest subsequence. Let's see AC AGGAC AGGAC. Yes, that appears to be the longest common subsequence. That's all for today. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. Bye-bye.